This week on Motorhead Garage, Brian and John revive a street ride and secure some valuable cargo. And later on, we're organizing our tools and giving a Duramax diesel a makeover. All that and more next on Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting. Welcome to Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting. This week in the shop, we have a 1929 Pontiac Street Rod. This car is really cool. We're joined by Danny from Steel Rubber Products. What we're gonna be talking about today is the drivability and enjoyability of your street rod in any old car and increasing that by using their products in terms of sealing, windows, doors, that kind of stuff. We're talking weather stripping. And what this means is when you're going down the road, you wanna have good sealing doors and windows so you don't have the whistling of the wind going through the car. Or if you're out there in a rainstorm, you don't wanna be having to bail the floorboards out when you're driving down the highway. Steel Rubber offers a full catalog of products for this 1929 Pontiac if you're gonna restore it. But Danny, this is a street route. We're not doing a restoration here and you guys can handle those needs too. That's right. We do have parts that are direct fit replacements for this car and older, you know, all the GMs, Mopars, Fords. And if you're doing a restoration, there's sometimes you need a direct fit replacement. Like for this lower windshield seal for the crank up windshield, we got a direct seal for that and it works out great. Though there's some things, you know, we can have universal or street rod type part that'll work great for you. Yeah, for instance, you know, this car hasn't been sectioned at all, so the cowl is the stock size and width. We're actually going to talk about doing some, doing some pieces on that cowl. If you wanted to use a stock style cloth, you could do that. Or if you wanted to go more modern for a cleaner look, you can use this rubber. If the car happened to have been modified, I understand you guys can even make custom parts to, uh, to change, say, someone that's chopped the top. That's right. We do actually make some custom chopped top windshields. We have the molds to do it. We just change the length of the weather stripping, and we can make it direct fit for your glass. We can put a seal on something that maybe never had a seal to begin with, so we, we can do anything to help keep that vehicle tight. Talk to me about what we got going on here with our, uh, with our cowl that we're actually going to be placing this piece on for our hood, right? So this cowl originally came with something like this. It was cloth, it was stapled onto the body, and if you're wanting to do an original type restoration, it's perfect, we have that. And if you're wanting to do something maybe a little more clean or modern, we have this rubber seal here, which has a very similar style to it that works really nicely as well. Talk me through laying it on. So first thing we want to do is clean it up with just a little alcohol wipe. These come with the peeling stick anytime you buy it. Just a quick wipe to make sure everything is clean. There's no bad residue or anything. And this 3M adhesive is really great. It's a heat applied tape and it works really well. And yeah, if you had a car that had been modified, and we talked a little bit about this before, John is actually going to show us in a minute here how you offer a cool system to kind of get those modified cars to figure out what pieces and parts you need to get the fitment right. That's right. Now, if you notice here, there's a uh, space for the hood hinge and the cowl. If we were going to put the full hood on here, we'd obviously make a cut. This owner of this car is not going to run the hood, and so that means we can leave it uncut for a nice clean finish. John's going to show us how you can measure for the perfect fit for your custom applications. Well, we made it over to the door, and you and Brian did great work on the front, but all that's been in the steel rubber product catalog there. This is not the case. This door here, no stripping at all from the factory. I mean, you can see it here. It didn't even have it. What is the solution for that, Danny? So if we don't have an OE replacement for it, we have to figure out the gap size, and we recommend the putty test. All right. Can you teach me the putty test so we can show everybody how to use it? Yeah, so we have a little piece of putty here mm -hmm. wrapped in saran wrap just so we don't make a mess. Okay. And then we're going to close it all in right. the door jam. Nice. Wow, look at that. Looks just like a piece of trim. Now what do we do? And then we'll take a measurement okay. of that depth. So it's about 3 8 And you guys have a universal trim that'll fit that? Yes, we have several sizes on our universal catalog. This one in particular fits anything from 3 8 up to 9 16 So and it has a lot of squish to it, so I think it'll work perfect. Well, Dan, you guys got a bunch of other products. What do you have and where are we going to find you on the website? So we have all the products you'll need for your door, weather stripping, your hood, all the bumpers and grommets, and that's all on www.steelrubber.com. Well, what an awesome way to start a show. We got an awesome car, awesome product. I gotta get this children's putty back to Lowen's dressing room, but stick around. There's plenty more Motorhead Garage right after this break.
Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting, is brought to you by Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. Under the Sun Inserts, grill inserts for Jeep Wranglers made in the USA by Jeep lovers. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting. Now sometimes at the garage we have to think out of the box and you know what? We're doing that literally today. These tools are out of the box. I'm here with Craig Carlton from Red Baron Tools. Now Craig, this is ingenious man. This is something. Tell me about Red Baron Tools. How did you come up with this? I mean you're even thinking out of the box. So John, I was uh, at, the, at my own shop there and I have a stool that you sit on and I had one of those buckets with the cloth organizer on the outside and I was turning it and I thought, boy, it'd be nice to have my mechanics tools on the outside like that so that it's, it's easy to see and easy to reach. And that developed into or evolved into what we have here. Evolved into, yeah. You yeah. told me you had a couple of prototypes with some steel. I mean, we got a lot going on here. Let's just start at the bottom and work our way up because, I mean, this is really an impressive piece. Yeah, so we, we have uh, four-inch casters. We use four-inch rubberized type casters uh, for easy, easy rolling around the shop. We put brakes on the front because they do roll very easily and uh, we don't want it rolling into a project. Now how much can these things support? So these are rated for 120 pounds each. The frame itself is 12 gauge. Right. Uh, these trays are removable so you can use them for you know shop parts. Um, there, is a, there is an adjustment on it also. That I give you a three inch adjustment. It's in the highest position right now but I do give you a three inch adjustment or with some help you can take this pin out and this drops all the way down to this level. So if, if we're sitting on a stool working on a set of brakes or maybe a motorcycle or something like that, then it brings the tools right down to your level and, and, and you have access to all the tools. Yeah, adjustable tool tray. I mean, you said you're in the garage down there, it's down low, now we're up high. I mean, I could put this thing right over a car or workbench or whatever I wanted to do. Now really the meat and potatoes is right here. I mean, let's go over this turntable system. This is awesome. So it sits on a Lazy Susan bearing and you can rotate it. So if you and I are working on the same project, maybe it's a car or a boat or a motorcycle, you have access to, and I have access to 100% of the tools just by rotating it. And to rotate it, I'll tell you, it's so smooth and so sturdy. I mean, this has to be a massive bearing. So it sits on a 12 inch Lazy Susan bearing that's rated for 700 pounds. What about the tool storage? I mean, we can do sockets, wrenches, screwdrivers. I see everything on here. Can we do half inch, quarter inch, all different drives? Yeah, John, we, we, uh, we set it up for quarter inch drive. This bank is quarter inch drive. This is quarter inch. These are three eighths, three eighths. These are three eighths. And then I even have some half inch drive sockets in this, in this setup the way we have it like that. Which is great because the spacing's different so I can put the different sockets. It doesn't matter if it's deep well or short well. I mean, they're there matter. to stay. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Work our way up to the second level. Okay, so what we did on this is these are just foam inserts and the wrenches just slide in and out very easily. So I can put any wrench in there. Any I type mean, of wrench. What if I commonly use something like there that? There you go. You can take that and slide it right in. All right, good. Or you can put it up in top. We have uh, 43 spaces. There's, there's roughly 50 to 60 wrenches. We also have a bank. I left this open here for pliers. Oh wow, so you're talking about, handles. yeah, there's no sockets right here, Correct. so you can actually put pliers and other things right there. You can put a whole thing, got your screwdrivers up top. I mean, you got a mobile station right here. I guess the question would be, what do I do with the foam? Can I replace it or can I make custom patterns or how am I gonna do that? So we, we, have, um, we have foam inserts. These are the uh, foam inserts that I use. Okay. They go like this and they sit in there just like that, John. And, All right. and as this surface wears, which it's going to over time, you just replace, you, you just flip it. <laughs> Simply like that. Right. So now you have another wear surface. You see that? Wow. And your slits are all up in there, right, for the tools. They're all the same, so we can accompany any size tool. It really any doesn't size matter. Tool. That's right. Very cool. So now you're getting double wear patterns, and then what about if I want to replace it? Just order it online. Just, Just go that online. simple. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Now, really, the coolest part's the drawer, man. Show us the drawer. Okay, so there's a finger pull right there, John. Just pull it straight out. Keep right. going. It goes all the way out. Wow. It, it's, it it's, uh, goes all the way through. It's 18 inches deep. That's not it, though. That's not it. There's another one there. Okay, so I'm pulling right this out. There oh, look go. at that. There's one there. And you utilize There's two over here. everything. So if I want to use a flashlight, tape measure, I mean, I can put anything in here. Make the drawer, put my meter in there, put all my stuff in there. I mean, this thing is incredible, Craig. This is the way to go. So yeah, there's plenty of uses for this. DIY, professional shops. Craig, what if I have some extended extensions and stuff that are pretty long? So they fit right on the top here. This, this, these openings actually go all the way down to this level. So you can see you have long 
capability of long extensions. Yeah, it takes care of the whole thing. Sure does. We even have a locking top right here, don't we? We can put the locking top on. Right. And the locking top also is. It's a cut resistant material. Yep. It just lays over the top and then you pull it tight with this lock. Yep. And we the cut resistant on, material. That's the coolest part here, I mean. And this is, this is a fairly sharp knife and you know, I put my hands right behind it and it doesn't cut it. Wow, phenomenal. Well, Craig, thank you so much for bringing it in. I'll tell you what, we got this old hot rod behind us. What a perfect application. I'm gonna wheel the tool cart over there because I got the best tool cart in the world. Look it up on redbarontools.com. Well, we'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting right after this break. Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting. We hate thieves around here and any product that makes their lives more difficult is something we really love. Now, high-end coolers are a thing these days. Why? Because people take them out on the trail, they take them out on job sites, and they keep their stuff fresh and cool for sometimes days on end. But they're also targets for thieves because, well, they're valuable, they're worth a bunch of money. Deny Locks has come up with a product that'll help you secure your cooler. It's easy to install, and I got Jake from Deny Locks here. Man, how'd you guys come up with this? And we're in the oil field and uh, had a handful of them stolen and finally got tired of the thieves. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great product that could be installed very easily at home. We're actually going to demonstrate that in a minute or two. But the genius here is the fact that there are these slots in the cooler, which these are not designed for locks. What are these designed they for? They haven't been in the past. They're, they're there for ratchet straps, uh, tie down but super strong and a great way for you to introduce this product. So how does it work and what am I looking at? So basically you've got both pieces are 304 stainless steel. Uh, this is cast out of 304. This is bent out of uh, 3 16 thickness. We do it all there in Texas. Texas tough, man. Texas right. tough. So with stainless, it's going to weather fine no matter what your environment is. And really when we talk about installing this, we're going to drill one hole. We're going to tighten up one nut and that's gonna get us uh, get us not only the security of the thing, but also gonna keep it from rolling around in the bit of the that's truck. That's correct. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, like any general guidelines of where to put it or how people like to put them? Uh, you know, in general, I just wanna set it up. Uh, if you want to, we can pop this up on here sure. real quick and I'll show you that way. Th this right here is able, enables you to see where you're gonna set. And since you're drilling a hole in it, you wanna make sure it's in the right spot. This is where we want it. What's the next step? Well, move it back a little bit. We actually wanna mark the hole first. Mark the hole, so we're gonna our stud right there, and I will lift this up and make our mark for where that stud lands. Three eighths drill bit. That's your job, and I'm gonna get ready to tighten this nut. Works for me. Right there. Beautiful. So I'm gonna go underneath. You can go ahead and drop the uh, drop the base in there. Now, this can be done with one person, right? You don't need two guys. Correct. So once you drill the hole, just slide it forward and it'll slide directly in. Push the lock, push the button. That way, the cooler helps hold it down uh, and, and it doesn't turn around in a circle. Perfect. Now, not all coolers are the same size. You guys offer different sizes, right? That's correct. Uh, we, we manufacture these bars in one inch increments. So main thing that changes in all these different coolers is the height of the cooler. This nut is also kind of an interesting feature. Tell me what I'm tightening up down here. It's a breakaway security nut, and what it is, it's, it's, it's also stainless. So once uh, there's, it's tapered down, it acts as a nut and a washer at the same time. Now we do use standard 3.8, 16 threads, so you can use your own uh, uh, regu regular lock nut or a lock washer as well. But being a security company, we want to send the most secure thing possible. Give it a little bit more, and the, and, and the actual three-quarter part of it falls off. And there it goes. Drop down. That's what's left of our security nut. That's it. So, you know, there's a lot more going on for security outside of coolers. We have an anchor point in our truck. What else have you guys developed? Right. We don't want to be just a cooler anchor uh, and a cooler lock. So if you have anything, a spare tire, generators, air compressors, and so forth, we make chain restraints. That way you can use your own 3H chain, a quarter inch chain, and if you have a, a, a cable or any other kind of adapter, we make an adapter for that as well. All 304 stainless. You know, Jake, it isn't just about uh, a cooler in the bed of a truck or an oil field. You've got race teams. You've got a lot of people that have exposed things. You were down at Baja recently, so you know that firsthand. That's correct. There's always something else that needs to be secured to the surface and locked. And once we mount this anchor point in the back of the truck, we decided there's got to be other ways and other things that aren't always the shape of a cooler. And these are not fishing hooks you've developed. What That's am I correct. looking at here? These are chain restraints. So this one actually works with a 3 h chain, and this one works with a quarter inch. And if you have anything else like a, a, a looped-in cable, uh, we, we have a, a product for that as well that adapts to it. Where do we find you on the internet? Denylocks.com. 
Denylox.com, Texas Tough, oil field tested, and really easy to install. We'll be back right after this. Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting, is brought to you by Stage 8 Fasteners, home of the world's best locking hitter bolt. For more information, go to stage8.com. Innovation Performance Technologies, classic lines, modern power. Strata Italia, simply innovative. And by Prefix Corporation, excellence is expected. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting. Now we're gonna put a cold air intake by Dan's Diesel Performance on our Dormax Diesel. Why? Well, it's all about air and fuel, get it in there, bigger bang, more horsepower. It's real simple to do, just take the factory stuff off. I already have the bolts loose to the box, got the hose clamp off here to the coolant recovery, a couple of clips here with a mass airflow sensor. You got one over here, it's a humidity sensor. Put them out of the way, no problem, safety clips out. Then it's just a matter of two screws. I got a screw right up here on the front that actually holds the air ducting on for the factory stuff. One on the back, loosen those up. And then what I'll go ahead and do, well, I got it here, it's in a good mounting situation. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these sensors out and we'll switch them over to the Dan's Performance one, which has a CNC machine cuts for them. But you know, Dan's Performance has a bunch of parts and Brian's taking a look at them right now. So as John works to prepare the Duramax engine for the cold air intake install, I figured it was a good time to show you just a few of the wide range of products that Dan's Diesel Performance carries. Some of the stuff they make themselves, for instance, we have the billet fuel sump here, which is a really neat piece because of the fact that if you're going to put a high performance lift pump on your truck, there are other kits out there that have you making multiple holes in the tank, maybe you got to mess around with a filler neck, and really what you're doing is creating a situation that has a lot more opportunity for leakage. This is machined right in-house at Dan's Diesel Performance, it's billet aluminum, and as you can see, it's very, very well done. The other benefit here, of course, the dual port design means that the fuel is going to leave and return back to the same piece. It's a simplified design, and it's really, really nice, heavy duty like everything else on your diesel truck is. Moving air into a diesel engine is incredibly important. So let's say you've upgraded your fuel system and now you're looking to upgrade the turbocharger, but you don't want to go whole hog with all the custom plumbing and everything else. This is your solution. This is their drop-in turbo for an LML Duramax. They make these for other engine families as well. But this is cool because of the fact that it'll support up to 700 horsepower. It has the proprietary wheel that Dan's Diesel Performance machines in-house as well. It's a billet wheel, 66 millimeter inlet over the 60 millimeter inlet that you would have had in your factory turbo. The neat thing is this can grow with your truck. For instance, if you have a mostly stock fuel system and say stock injectors, you could bolt this on and pick up a little bit of power. But as you upgrade your fuel system, as you upgrade the rest of the truck, this baby will support over 700 horsepower to the wheels. It's been dyno tested. Also, they balance these in-house as well. Very high performance, very highly detailed operation. You get a balance sheet with every turbo that you buy. Lastly, and what we're gonna be installing on our LML equipped 2015 Silverado is this neat four inch air intake system. So it is mandrel bent four inch pipe, CNC machined bracketry here for our sensors that came off the factory engine. They're gonna bolt right in here. It comes with a high flow dry media AFE filter. The dry media stuff is cool because you don't have to keep oiling it. And you also get this neat pre-filter which is gonna help extend the life of your already high performance air filter by keeping some of that larger stuff from getting caught up in the pleats. All of this is a very holistic package, right? It doesn't have to all be used together, but if you build your truck in stages, upgrade the fuel system, upgrade the turbo, upgrade the air intake, sooner or later, you're gonna have a very high performance factory hot rodded diesel truck. John's got going on the install. He's got the parts over there. We're gonna make more power and a little bit more noise with this Dan's diesel performance cold air intake. Well, we have all the factory stuff out. We're actually ready to put in our Dan's Diesel Performance cold air intake. How do you know you have a good cold air intake? Well, it's pretty evident. Obviously, the CNC machines right here made these sensors go in like a breeze. And the seal, you're not going to have any leaks. So they gave me the actual little screws to go in there as well. Pre-tapped, everything's in good shape. They're nice and tight. Everything's secure. Now we'll just reverse the procedure. So I have everything out. One other thing I want to show you. Down here on the bottom, there's actually a bolt. And this is going to go into the bracket. And what this bolt's doing, it goes to the injector driver module down there. And this is going to hold it to the bottom down there when we get it secure. So I'm going to pull this bolt out, get it out of the way for now. So when we get it lined up, we can reinstall it with that bolt. Once I get that out of the way, 
we're ready to install it. Now I like to give myself any mechanical advantage I can, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this silicone, this blaster. Just rub a little bit in here just so it slides on a little bit easier. I already have it installed on the factory side over there. Once I got it in there, I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna take the cold air intake and I'm just gonna put it in here just like it goes. Now Dan's diesel performance couldn't have made this any easier. This is where engineering comes into play, man. This thing actually is perfect. I mean, it slides right in. My bolt hole's lining down there, just perfect. So I get it in like that, get ready to go. Now I'm just gonna go down here and get this bolt started back where I took it off the injector bracket down there. Stick it through and get a couple threads going just to make sure everything's lined up. Once I got it all lined up down there, I can go ahead and cinch that up a little bit later. Come back, now we're just gonna make all our connections. Now the cool part is I don't need any extenders or wire harnesses or anything to go. So I'm gonna come over here up to the top where it actually goes into the actual air box and I'm gonna snug up this clamp. You don't want any air leaks. I mean, this is really cool. It's mandrel bent. We're talking about getting the air in and getting the air out. So not only are we getting it in cold air, with this nice smooth mandrel bends, we're not beating up that air and causing a lot of heat. No need to cool it if you're gonna cause heat. And Dan's diesel performance does a great job at that. So we'll get that snugged up. Once we get that snugged up, I can go ahead and take this air cleaner right here, which is really nice with the pre-filter in there Brian was telling you about. And that's really simple. Just a matter of putting the clamp over that, slipping that on. I'm gonna leave that Dan's diesel performance sitting right up because I wanna show it off because it sure is a good looking piece. I and mean, it's a piece of work and that's a piece of art too. So there we go, I get that up. I'll come back and snug that up. We're gonna get nice cold air, we're gonna make horsepower and it's even gonna sound good. That's the cool part about these Duramax diesels. Well, this is a nice piece. I'll tell you what, we're out of time for today, but if you have something you wanna get on Motorhead Garage, just email Jeff at masterstv.com. Take this thing out for a spin, check out this new horsepower and the sound. We'll see you next week right here for Motorhead Garage presented by Justice Blasting.